70% of all archaeology is done in the library, research, and reading. Kevin Cherka here, the Indiana Jones nerd yet again, and today we're going to be tackling something that I've been wanting to do for a long time now. What is the story of Indiana Jones 5? I've been following this thing since before filming began and covering every little bit of news and rumors. So now I'm going to piece this thing together best I can. And keep in mind, this will be a combination of confirmed leaks and unconfirmed rumors. So, according to IMDb, Disney and Paramount will be distributing this film together in all countries. We initially thought the Disney castle would fade into Bambara, but I now believe that the Paramount logo, as is tradition, will fade into a mountain, namely Bokil Etib Moor in Scotland. It's possible that an opening scene will take place in the Scottish Highlands as there was a bit of filming done there. This might lead directly into the World War II stuff, but I think there is a segment that will precede even that. Indy visits Oxford, where we see a street lined with 1940s era cars. A young girl watches from the window. I believe this is the Phoebe Waller Bridge character as a kid, and I believe that her name is Sonia Brody and that she is the daughter, niece, or granddaughter of Marcus Brody. The owner of the house is likely played by Toby Jones, who I believe is the brother of Marcus Brody, and whose name might be Basil, as IMDb credits an actress as Basil's housekeeper. Indy and Basil engage in a shouting match, and Basil barricades himself inside a room, which Indy breaks into while Sonya watches. Indy and Basil travel across the channel into mainland Europe. The area of the Letterfoot Viaduct doubles for a location where they go underwater to retrieve this artifact, which may be a version of the Antikythera device, the world's oldest analog computer, which was used in astronomy. Soon, we see the pair of them look off in concern, and I believe that it is at this point that Indy is captured by the Nazis, we haven't seen Basil in any other scene so far, so he may or may not make it out of this scene. Indy is taken to a Nazi fortress filmed at Bamburgh Castle, possibly a POW camp. Eyewitnesses reported a Christmas tree on the wall of the castle, suggesting perhaps December of 1944. Here, Indy will encounter one or two important Nazi characters. I'm guessing Thomas Kretschmann will be playing a Nazi officer as he has done in over a dozen other films. This may or may not be a look at his character here. We might also be introduced to the Mads Mikkelsen character, a Nazi scientist who might have a lab in the castle where he is researching something that I bet will tie into the rest of the plot, perhaps time travel if we are to believe that rumor. Soon, a series of explosions rock the castle, possibly from Allied aerial bombardment. The Nazis load up a train full of artifacts and perhaps gold to evacuate to safety. This train is based on a real-life rumor of a Nazi gold train that was hidden and never found. Indy begins a daring escape from the castle, likely taking advantage of the chaos from the explosions. Thus begins one of the greatest chase scenes in the entire franchise. Indy, on motorcycle and disguised in a German officer's uniform, pursues the train, presumably to seize an artifact such as the Antikythera device looking item. Trucks, jeeps, motorcycles, and even a tank take part in what must be an incredible chase. The Nazi train is armored and protected with heavy guns as well. And this is the full extent of what we know about the opening sequences of the film. Again, it's possible that all of the Oxford and Toby Jones scenes will occur after the World War II stuff, as I mentioned earlier. The story picks up 25 years later. Indy is now about 70 years old and has perhaps just retired from his teaching position. We have no confirmation of any legacy characters appearing in the film, but we all hope that his wife Marianne will make an appearance in the film. Sonia Brody is now all grown up and working as Indy's assistant. She accompanies him to New York, where a parade is being put on to welcome the Apollo 11 astronauts from their moon landing. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins are even spotted here. 
It should be noted that, according to rumors, Mads Mikkelsen's character is by now working with NASA, similar to the real-world story of Werner Von Braun. Indy somehow receives this clock, likely a retirement gift. However, we the fans have speculated that there is more to it than that. The presence of a clock possibly ties in with the theme of time in this film. Also note how the shape of the base of the clock is similar to the shape of the artifact from earlier. A group of CIA agents crash the party. They are led by Seanit Renee Wilson, who is Mads Mikkelsen's CIA handler, and sports a great afro and period clothing. Her CIA posse includes Kleber, played by Boyd Holbrook. It also includes this frightening giant, played by Oliver Richters. And there is one other agent with them here as well. I believe that these three men are in fact Nazis who have infiltrated the CIA. So, Indy is kidnapped by the agents and transported in a large blue van. But the van comes up against a group of Vietnam War protesters blocking the street. They decide to cross the street on foot, but Indy grabs a protest sign and fights back. Which includes this hilarious moment. Then, Indy scampers off. There is an exciting chase through the Apollo Parade, which may occur at this point, or perhaps before Indy is kidnapped. Indy on horseback is pursued by Kleber, who rides a motorcycle. They zip around cheerleaders, bagpipe players, and more. We also see a float with a large model of the moon. There's a speculation that this will somehow be used as a reference to the iconic boulder scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Later, we see Indy escaping to the subway on foot. Additional New York scenes take place later that night. So, from here, we get the traditional map scene as Indy and Sonya fly aboard a Pan Am flight to their next destination. An actress on IMDb is credited as Pan Am stewardess. And now this brings us to Sicily, where a significant part of the movie was filmed. And there is a lot going on here, and it's hard to say the exact order that this all takes place. We know that Mads Mikkelsen was spotted in costume during the shoot at Chefalu, but we have no footage of any of his scenes. We are introduced to a young boy with curly hair. As of yet, we still have not identified this actor. He is clearly important to the story, and it seems like he must know something. According to eyewitnesses, his character is named Hynix or Jaime. Now, Sonia and Hynix sit on the steps of the Norman Cathedral of Chefalu while a procession goes by. Meanwhile, Indy purchases climbing gear, a guide to Syracuse, and other supplies. And he appears to have something in his satchel, which is the shape of that artifact from earlier in the film. Indy sees Hynix being kidnapped by Kleber and the others in the blue van. He yells out to Sonia that Hynix has been taken. Indy jumps in a blue wedding car and speeds off after them. The chase passes by a small amusement park and the harbor. The van either takes Hynix to the yacht or perhaps takes Hynix to the Doric Temple of Sagista. We also have scenes of Indy and Sonia there, although they seem pretty casual, so perhaps this happens before the kidnapping? Indy and Sonia break away from a tour group and look over the edge here. They enter a cave filmed at the Eye of Dionysus. They proceed through caverns filled with booby traps, which were filmed at Pinewood Studios. I'm guessing that this first official picture of the film comes from this part of the film. Eventually, they make their way to a large underground structure with a huge dome. Ultimately, the dome collapses on itself. And now we're going to get into some of the stuff shot at Tunora del Seco. The rumor is that two airplanes, one carrying Mads Mikkelsen and one carrying Indy and Sonia, will time travel to ancient Syracuse. The Mads Mikkelsen character will be disfigured in an airplane crash, and we have seen a downed World War II aircraft at this location. Another plane, still intact, is seen in the upper right-hand corner here. However, we next see Indy and Sonia recovering from a parachute drop, and it seems as if they have shared a parachute. Sonia fetches Indy's hat as they look around in awe. 
Now, the same day that this scene was shot, some very interesting things were shot at the same location. We saw some men in an ancient boat, and more importantly, a battle between ancient Greek and Roman soldiers. As I mentioned in an earlier video, no Indiana Jones films have ever shown a flashback to the ancient world. There has been speculation and rumors that this indicates a time travel element. We believe that the scenes depicted here are of the Siege of Syracuse around 212 BC. Quick bit of history for you all. The mathematician and scientist Archimedes invented several devices to protect the city from the Roman siege, including a giant claw and heat ray reflecting mirrors. Eventually the Romans broke through and killed Archimedes as he studied in his home. Indiana Jones 5 did film in Syracuse at the Castel Maneche, and one rumor suggested that Archimedes' laboratory was filmed within the castle. Ballistas and ancient set dressings were set up at the castle as well, and a figure was seen waving a sword as if watching someone get away. And Mark Killeen, an actor who has played several ancient era characters in the past, is listed by IMDb as playing a character named Pontimus. Now, I'm not certain on the placement of this scene. It would appear that Indy and Sonia escaped back to the future and were reunited with Hynix. They arrive by truck to the dock where they meet Indy's dear friend Antonio Banderas. The two characters greet each other warmly and Banderas also charmingly greets Sonia. Banderas captains a boat and takes them out to sea. There. He, along with Indy and Sonia, go scuba diving. They must be looking for a lost ship below the sea. According to an interview with Antonio Banderas, it appears that his character will die for Indy at some point. There is also a yacht which is submerged below the sea at some point. And finally, that brings us to Morocco. We've only seen one scene here, but... It's a big one, and I think this film's climactic chase. Indy, Sonia, and Hynix take part in an exhilarating chase scene involving tuk-tuks, or auto rickshaws. They are pursued by various cars and motorcycles. There are a lot of different shots here showing Indy and Sonia in different positions. We see them running on foot while pursued by motorcycles. I think this leads into the tuk-tuk chase. Indy is seen driving with Hynix and Sonya in the back. The tuk-tuk cuts through a marketplace before being cut off by this green car. We see the vehicle zip around corners and down busy streets. A goon gets on top of the tuk-tuk, resulting in a rip in the roof. At one point we see Sonya hanging off the back of one of the cars. At another point in the chase, Sonya appears driving a different tuk-tuk. We see the two tuk-tuks driving side by side, and at one point, Indy is hanging off the back of Sonya's vehicle. Then Hynix is seen driving the second rickshaw. An early find on IMDb listed a pyramid scene to be shot in Morocco. This has not been verified at all, but since it precedes the announcements of the Morocco shoot, I wonder if it might have some credence. The only pyramid I know of in Morocco is the Celestial Staircase, which was created by the German artist Hans-Jörg Voth. And that's it. That is everything we know about the plot of Indiana Jones 5. I did my best to piece it all together, but odds are I got a few things wrong, and there's still a lot that we don't know. But now I turn it over to you, so let me know your reaction to all of this, and what are your predictions for Indiana Jones 5? Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like, subscribe, and share it for me if you would. And I wish you all fortune and glory. Bye-bye now.